Hi, this is News and Views. Thank you for joining us. We have such an important show today. Hector Valenzuela, UH professor of tropical ag, is here with me today. Thanks so much for coming again <laughs> and again. <laughs> you know, I, I keep on calling you because this is such an important time in, for agriculture and such an important show. You know, the reason, the reason I'm saying that is because uh, the governor, David Ige, has said that he would like to double food production in Hawaii by 2030. Originally, it was 2020. And the state goal is very important. If we ever get cut off from the, you know, the mainland, for whatever reason, for, for um, the way, you know, during the earthquake, the, the ports and the airports would not be workable. If we ever get cut off, uh, we only have less than a f week's worth of food on the island. If we get devastated by uh, whatever, you know, um, we're in and we need to be self-sustaining. So it's so important. And the state goal by 2030 is a very important goal. That's why this is a very important show because the big question is how do you do it? And that's what Hector I co <laughs> can tell us because um, he is aware of how the state has done it in the past. We're at, during World War II, the, the state was very afraid we were, gonna get, we were going to get cut off from the mainland. So we were very afraid that we wouldn't have food, and therefore they ramped everything up so that food production here was very, very good. And that's what Hector can tell us about. So. Um, you know, uh, uh, apparently the Department of Agric Agriculture has 1% of the state budget for agriculture. Could you give us an idea of what the Department of Agriculture's um, mission is in this picture? Uh, yeah. Hi, Renee. And first, yes. th thanks again for inviting me. And oh, to, thank you for to, coming. To, to talk in this show about uh, food security in the state. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Department of Agriculture is primarily a regulatory agency mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that all the uh, farming activities in the state meet uh, regulatory standards in terms of protection the, of the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, so they deal with uh, uh, the regulation for the use of pesticides. Uh, mm -hmm. But they also deal with land use mm -hmm. and with uh, marketing strategies. Mm -hmm. uh, as because of the challenges in agriculture, they have become also involved in how to help the industries in the state, uh, mm -hmm. and how to develop uh, plans for mm -hmm. agriculture yeah. in terms of wh where we should be going. So when we were talking about food production, you mentioned um, uh, grants were given up by the state. Is that by the Department of Agriculture? The, the G, what does GACC mean that, that gives out these grants? Could you tell us a little bit about these grants? When the uh, plantations, when the, when the industry realized, uh, the policymakers realized that the plantations were going to close down, mm -hmm. they tried to figure out mechanisms to support the, the industry. Uh, and they looked at other states and they come up, came up with the concept of the Governor's Agriculture a Coordinating Committee. GACC. GACC, mm -hmm. which consists of funding local industries. Uh, mm -hmm. and so they decided to uh, put, a, put together blocks of funding and the Department of Agriculture would help to uh, funnel these monies through the College of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, so they said we will give the so college, much. The college, UH College of Agriculture. UH CITAR, the College of Agriculture, mm -hmm. would say where are we going to actually use those monies for? Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to help the, the fruit crops industry, mm -hmm. the vegetables industry, the ornamentals. Mm -hmm. uh, so early on, they allocated about $5 million every year. Mm -hmm. uh, however, about half of those monies were going to the former Hawaii Sugar Planters Association. Oh. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I say it was going to the former oligarchs mm -hmm. on the, in the state, to mm -hmm. the uh, power brokers. But they are no longer here, so right. what could that $5 million how, how, how do they give out these grants, and what could that $5 million go to? Well, uh, 
my perspective is that, is that there's always some politics involved. Uh, mm -hmm. So rather just at looking what is best for the agriculture industry, as I'm saying, mm -hmm. half of the money directly went to the former plantations, mm -hmm. uh, the ha former Hawaii sugar planters. So there, there was involved some kind of politics. How much money, wh why should we be giving so much money to plantations that are going in decline? Mm -hmm. uh, but supposedly, uh, the, the, co the, future, uh, the college would get together and say the fruit crops industry, like mangoes, mm -hmm. uh, carambola, mm -hmm. all the, the star fruits, mm -hmm. they, they are facing some problems and we're going to devote so much money to uh, some bottlenecks. Mm -hmm. uh, so perhaps we're going to uh, fund some research project from the university to help the industry uh, advance to, a next, to the next level. Mm -hmm. So they allocated so much money to each of the different industries. Mm -hmm. uh, so and would they, I mean, agricult I mean, organic agriculture is something that people really support now. So would they be supporting organic in uh, agriculture? Well, <laughs> I think early in the 90s, uh, organics was not even on the radar. Yes, but today. Right. <laughs> well, we no longer have the GACC, so there's no longer that source of funding. Uh -huh. uh, and I, so I think isn't this something that if you want to promote food production, double food production by 2030, isn't this something that they could reinstate then? Right. So th the basic premise is that <coughs> funding for research for agriculture has mm -hmm. a high return on, on, in, on investment. Mm -hmm. uh, so we know from past studies that the return on the investment from research and agriculture can be over 30%. It can be 30 to 60% annual return on investment from agricultural research. Uh, so this really is a call. And my central criticism is that we really don't have a roadmap right now to say how are we going to implement different programs to double our production of local mm -hmm. food production. Well, how would you, if you were to construct a roadmap, how would you do it? It for towards organic farming, not um, you know um, sugarcane or pineapple mm -hmm. or GMOs, right. but towards organic farming where we could be the the local f um, citizen could be using eating local food. How would you? Right. What kind of roadmap uh, could you see? S so first <laughs> of all, I should clarify that individually, there's many many excellent projects in this state. Uh, there's many real good projects being conducted by the College of Agriculture and the DOA, uh, the different agencies in the state. They have, there's many excellent projects. But overall, if you look from afar, there's not a concerted program or roadmap that say this is how we are going to achieve the stated goals of increasing food production uh, over the past, over the next 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I'm saying is, you really have to look at the entire picture together and say what can actually what 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 are we going to do as a state to actually make this happen? Uh, what are the different perspectives? What are the different uh, I call it pieces of the puzzle that we need to put together, and how each of those are going to be put together, and what is what is going to be the action plan to actually achieve this within the next five and ten years? Uh, so there's different aspects. There's marketing. There's distribution. Uh, there is uh, agricultural research at the, at the university. There's land use, water use. So all of these pieces have to be put together. Mm -hmm. And so far, I have not seen a really proactive roadmap that say this is how it's going to be achieved. Uh, so from my perspective, it just sounds like lip service from the governor and, and our <laughs> policy leaders. And they have been unwilling to actually say how this will actually happen. Possibly they don't know how this could actually happen. Yes. Yeah, so, again, what do you suggest? Uh, if they are, if we are serious in the mm -hmm. state, and you brought the issue of organics, mm -hmm. and the issue of organics is important because uh, we, by today, we have realized that industrial farming that relies on pesticides, mm -hmm. biotechnology, and large scale monocultures and GMOs, and GMOs mm -hmm. have negative mm -hmm. environmental repercussions. Uh, we are applying too many pesticides, too many toxins in the soil. Uh, we are polluting the, the soil with too mm -hmm. much fertilizers. We drain into the ocean and damage our aquifers and the ocean. So if we could double production and concentrate on organic farming, 
how would you suggest that the state could do it? Uh, so just to re-emphasize, so not, not only we, do we have to increase food production, mm -hmm. but it has to be environmentally compatible. Right, and targeted. Right, and actually just clear that this is well established in our mission statements, in our mission statements of the College of Agriculture, and even from the Department of Agriculture mission statements, they plainly say what we, what our farming should be environmentally sensitive. How can we do it, and how can mm -hmm. we do it with right. minimizing the use of chemicals? How to? Right, right. Uh, so again, I think of it as different pieces of the puzzle, and uh, I, I mentioned some of those like marketing, land issues, labor, mm -hmm. water. So there's all these pieces that we actually need to put together and to be as efficient as possible. Uh, but you actually need people, experts, that familiar with agriculture to sit down and say, this is how, how we're actually going to, to do it, mm -hmm. develop a, a roadmap. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a central part, co me coming from the university, is what I think is the need to research. Uh, today, uh, and from this, was, this was part of the UA uh, support for agriculture in the past, during the, after World War II. Applied research, right. one, applied research. So, mm -hmm. so this has been traditionally the mandate of mm -hmm. UH and the Land Grant University, which has been from its inception to support lo family farms. Locally farm, farmed. Local farm, family farms family to, to farm farms. and to be more, more, more efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have done that in the mm -hmm. past, mm -hmm. uh, but I feel with the many uh, strings that are coming from different sides that we have lost track in terms mm -hmm. of uh, uh, what we were supposed to be doing, which has been to uh, support, develop technology to help farmers be more efficient. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, what, the plantations the I, are no longer here and GMO is discredited. So I have hope for the future for the family farms. Right, right. <laughs> so the, the way I, I put it is that today, small farmers are mm -hmm. pretty much on their own. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a, a young farmer in the mm -hmm. 20s, 30s, and, and they say, she or he says, I want to grow crop, par particular crop, technical information to provide to them. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I grow this crop? What variety should I be using? Uh, how much should I space it in the field? Real practice. And traditionally, the university used to provide that information. Mm -hmm. uh, in the old days, we used to, back in the 60s and 70s, uh, we used to do, conduct a lot of applied research mm -hmm. to develop this type of information. Uh, so when you decide to start farming, it's all laid out in, in a handbook that tells you wow. all the steps that you're supposed to follow. Wow, and, handbook. <laughs> right. Okay. And again, <laughs> at one time, uh, UH, the College of Agriculture, was known international, internationally mm. because of their expertise and mm -hmm. knowledge of, of, of tropical agriculture. And this was in the 60s, 70s. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. uh, however, when, when I joined UH in the 90s, mm -hmm. by that time, uh, about 60% uh, of the faculty in the Department of Plant Sciences was involved with non-food issues. Uh, like production or ornamental crops. Mm. And we had about one or two professors working with fruit crops and one or two professors working with vegetables. Mm -hmm. So there really wasn't that emphasis on food production in, mm -hmm. in the state. So how to bring it back to food production. Right, so you, right. they need research for one. And then, any, you know, what would you say be, beyond that? Uh, so you need uh, research on, on production, mm -hmm. pro production techniques. Mm -hmm. And you, pests, um, and new pests, variety. Pests, how to manage aphids, mm -hmm. and today we're talking about organic methods, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, mm -hmm. so far we have ignored a lot of the organic strategies that we, we could be following. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also economic uh, type of studies, mm -hmm. uh, and these... That the, farmer, that the farmer would need? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, so this involves that indicate the, the cost of producing a specific crop, uh, and mm -hmm. also the feasibility of uh, growing new crops. The uh, feasibility of growing new crops. Right. Can you actually tell them that the feasibility on that area of land that they're farming, you can actually tell them For that, that specific uh, location. Wow. So farming okay. involves mm -hmm. a lot of decision making. Mm -hmm. So the farmer, again, if you're a new farmer, and you say in my particular location, 
should I be growing tomatoes or should I be growing cabbage or onions? Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have the marketing information, uh, you can look at the, the cost of production for each of the, th the three different crops. Mm -hmm. And you know that you can look at the feasibility study. What is the feasibility of making a profit? On that kind of land, the feasibility right, that you can right. be uh, The feasibility that I can succeed choice. growing mm -hmm. this crop mm -hmm. as opposed to competing from the imports mm -hmm. that, are, that are coming oh. from California or wow. Arizona or, or other countries. Mm -hmm. So you have marketing feasibility studies that, mm -hmm. the, that, that the tell you the likelihood that you can succeed growing particular commodities. Mm -hmm. So as a farmer, you have a toolbox that mm -hmm. would help you with the, your decision making. And unfortunately, we haven't conducted those type of studies for the past 30 to 40 years. Uh, so You uh, have to rebuild your staff to do right, that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You have to rebuild your staff and you have to reward your staff for doing these reward type of studies. Reward your staff, right. The, the problem is that these studies are considered based, uh, applied research, mm -hmm. uh, like run of the mill type mm -hmm. of research. Mm -hmm. So you may not get the high level professional accreditation that you would get if you did some high-end laboratory research in the laboratory. Oh, well, I'm sorry, pro professional accreditation? Uh, uh, reputa reputation. Professional credit. Re right, reputation. right, right, right. Uh -huh. uh, so new, new faculty in the college, they mm -hmm. need to go through promotion and so on, and mm -hmm. they want to have international reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, but doing run-of-the-mill research might not get them the prestige. Mm -hmm. But if it's really important to, you know, to have more food production, isn't there a way where you can give the people who are actually doing the work the prestige for doing the practical work that we need as a state? Uh, I, I think so, and I think where this is where leadership comes up, especially for uh, policymakers and mm -hmm. the university leadership, which should indicate if you are a professor that are doing research that is helping our local industries, mm -hmm. you will be rewarded and your work will be recognized mm -hmm. when it promoted uh, mm -hmm. to the to the next level. Right. That's uh, yes. Uh, and uh, that's right it. now we really don't don't have that. It ha that hasn't been uh, articulated. Uh -huh. but we don't. We don't need. Well, we need people to publish in manuals, I mean, in journals and stuff like that. But we all, it seems to me we need people who are actually doing the work yeah. on the ground, right. in the communities, on right. the farms. Right. You, you can still conduct research. You can still publish mm -hmm. your research that is applied, that, is, mm -hmm. uh, that would help farmers. But it, the, the research is not as prestigious mm -hmm. as if you're doing some mathematical modeling oh. or some high-end well, research. We should make it as prestigious. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and as we indicated earlier, this is actually written in the mission statement of the, of it's the university. It's written in the mission statement. That the, the, pur <laughs> the purpose of the college, uh -huh. the purpose of the university, uh -huh. is to help local agricultural industries. Is to help local agriculture. That's what we want. And to protect the environment. Yes, uh, and so to protect the environment, definitely. Correct. Uh -huh. So right. if it's in their mission statement, all the more reason why they should be um, giving credit to uh, UH staff who help Right, the farmers right. do, the, do this job, right. very important job. So uh, about a couple of months ago, I wrote a commentary in the news, local newspaper. And my, what I was trying to say was that uh, we can kind of miss the boat over the past 15 years because mm -hmm. we haven't developed the type of plan that I'm saying is needed for, to, 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 move, to move forward. Mm -hmm. And if you look back at the past 15 years, mm -hmm. both UH and the Department of Ag have been actually promoting what I feel is the, ro the, long, the wrong model of farming, which is GMOs oh, and large-scale uh -huh. industrial farming. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel that we have missed the boat. And I don't know if I can quote yes, what, a, what a, mm -hmm. a person very familiar with the industry over the past 40 years, oh, he uh -huh. indicated. Mm -hmm. And he says, yes, we have to change the way we look at agriculture but it cannot be the way that got us here in the first place. Everyone knew sugar and pineapple were going to leave. Mm. How come nobody did anything? Mm -hmm. The present ag leadership has failed us and have, ha have a hard time seeing beyond their nose. 
they lack vision and instead are trying to take the, with the GMO solution. Where are the breeders to develop our foods in Hawaii? They are all gone. We have an opportunity to create back, to get back to the basics with this stalled economy, which was back in the 2010 and so mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. But the window can close soon. Then we're back to bring in all our food from the mainland. Even the former, a former DOA chair was working with Hark, which is, he says, GMO Central, mm. before she got his jo this job. So everybody's in bed with the Monsantos and Mycogens and Syngentas. Mm. This is what I would say. So he's saying we mm -hmm. have really been going in the wrong direction. Right, and it seems to me that if the DOA is not providing the leadership, then therefore it needs to come from the governor. Correct. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, the governor ha has established a roadmap mm -hmm. according to the Constitution, which says we should be growing our own food mm -hmm. and take care of our lands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now I'm saying, where is the actual plan to make it happen? Where yes. is our Marshall plan mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. stimulate the local mm -hmm. agriculture in the state? Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing is that Governor Ige did say on an interview that if we were to flesh out well, to build up the agriculture industry in the state so that it meets all of our needs, not just, and, and you know, so that um, we don't have so much of our food coming from the mainland, it could amount to a $7 billion industry. And he seemed quite excited about it. So it, it seems to me that um, if, with the need for food security, and we also need to factor in the export that we, we depend on economically, um, that they should start proactively looking for that roadmap. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the problem now is that all our money is going out of state in terms of food consumption. Mm. And mm -hmm. if, we, if the food is grown locally, the dollars would stay home. Right. And the dollars mm -hmm. would get multiplied six mm -hmm. to seven times mm -hmm. within the local economy, mm -hmm. uh, which would be a, a windfall uh, economically uh, mm -hmm. for the state. In top of that, we have the specter of climate change, right. Uh, right. which right. The, uh, countries all over the world are dealing with this and mm -hmm. saying, how are we going to adjust our local farming to be, adapt to be ready mm -hmm. for the uh, changes in climate yes, change? but apparently um, the traditional more organic way of farming is more resilient so that it can adjust to the, the changes in the climate. Correct. And, and after you, we talk about that a little bit, could we go back to the need plan and the important agricultural um, plan that came out recently, uh, important agricultural lands plan <laughs> that they're talking about recently. So, so the switch to conventional right. organic ag and then the land. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Constitutional Convention in 1978 uh, called for preservation of uh, important agricultural lands in the state, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for them mm -hmm. to be identified and preserved. Mm -hmm. And our politicians have really been dragging uh, their, their, their feet. 78 to now, wow, right. we're talking a lot, 40 years. So over the past, <laughs> over the past 60 years, we have lost about 50%, over 50% of the uh, valuable agricultural land by to development. Oh, geez. Uh, so. Uh, finally, some of our politicians are finally uh, develop, developing, identifying some of these lands and, mm -hmm. and, and trying to, to preserve them. Mm -hmm. uh, and th this is uh, to be commended. Mm -hmm. uh, but we should continue the efforts of uh, preserving the land and making it available mm -hmm. uh, yes. for, for f future farming. Uh -huh. And actually, um, to tell you the truth, as a Green Party, um, items for food security was for the state to get back to Ho'opili lands, which was known as the Golden Triangle in, in, in you know, past days um, for, you know, for agriculture. And we were calling for it to be bought back through eminent domain because it is so important for the needs for fu the future people of this state in future years. And of course, there's the um, Lahaina land that was ravaged by fire, that's another thing, another place where right. we could try and get, get lands.
Yeah, that was one of the agriculture. That, uh, that has been one of the biggest losses recently from agriculture in, in Oahu. Mm -hmm. uh, Ho'opili is one the most productive land in the, mm -hmm. in, in the state, mm -hmm. uh, and it is in close proximity to major markets. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So it's ideal for farmers in terms of production efficiency mm -hmm. to grow very high value crops mm -hmm. and deliver them to local markets. So very, which is in the local market to Ho'opili is very nearby also. So we could have mm -hmm. had a, a real model of small scale one to two acre farms. Mm -hmm. So a multi multitude of small farms in a mosaic mm -hmm. of di biodiversity mm -hmm. uh, within our urban uh, uh, circle in, in, in mm -hmm. Oahu. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you can see that the, uh, our politicians really sold out in, so in, upset in, mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the state. Really, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, uh, so in the last couple of minutes, you know, what, what would you like to say about ramping up food production so that we can double it in the next decade? Uh, so my call has been to make Hawaii a real, uh, a global center for tropical farming. Mm -hmm. and we can really be an example to the world of mm -hmm. how to take care of the land, how to develop high value agriculture. Mm -hmm. The way we used to have the reputation and, uh, before. Right, mm -hmm. and really it's to revitalize the economy of our rural economies mm -hmm. and to create a new venue for mm -hmm. young people mm -hmm. that are, are really calling f to work with the land. Oh yeah, uh, That's, they're, they're, they get very excited about it now. Right, uh -huh. right, but we really need a roadmap rather yes. than simply lip service or right. window dressing uh -huh. from our leaders, mm -hmm. but a, a real roadmap by mm -hmm. getting the brightest minds and more experienced minds mm -hmm. uh, without uh, interest from the oligarch mm -hmm. or uh, sp voice network the, in the state. Yeah, or the, the corporate interests to right. try to use basically our land and our good weather for GMO crops. Correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Well. And, you know, nowadays, kids are just so excited uh, to create food security and to create a sustainable um, uh, situation here with um, plants and, and uh, on absorbing 24%, 25% to 30% of the CO2 out of the, of the atmosphere. It makes, you know, a more sustainable um, use of the land and of course there's all the farm to school right. and the farm to table movements you know kids are excited now right uh -huh. but we really need new models of farming uh, right. that involve uh, agroforestry permaculture uh, with cultural sensitivity to the cultural needs of the community mm -hmm. uh, so this is different from the large scale uh, right. monoculture that we have been studying at the university oh. level so we really need to change our framework in terms of what we really need in Hawaii. What the farmers need and what the community needs needs to be put front and center again and not um, GMO, corporate GMO or um, uh, industrial farming. Yeah, industrial farming and um, Thank you so much for coming back. And Thank you again for inviting me. Thanks.